So welcome to this session. So thanks for uh, joining this session. So for today's talk, I'm going to share our implementations on design observability solution for multi-tenancy environments. And let me introduce myself. So my name is Husni Alhamdani as a SRE, and then I was also program committee of Multi-Tenancy Con Europe 2024. And then I was also LFX mentoring uh, Minty at Kyverno project. And then I've been contributing to some open source project like Istio, OpenTelemetry, and um, Cilium and Keda. So for um, today's agenda is a design observability solutions for multi-tenancy environment. And then we will start with the overview and then the observability pillars. And then we gonna deep dive for each um, observability category like the metrics, the traces and logs. And then lastly, we gonna um, share our um, solutions with Kyverno that we call as a multi-tenancy engine. Okay, let's start with um, what is multi-tenancy in uh, Kubernetes? So multi-tenancy in the cloud means using a shared service and resource for multiple customer. It can be multiple client or user, like including the compute network and storage. So it allow us to use um, the same infrastructure or the same underlying um, machines while keeping them isolated from one and another. And these isolations ensure that each tenant resource and data remain, uh, remain separate and invisible to other tenants. And then uh, to provide a secure and efficient environment because we are using um, the same um, underlying infra. And then in Multi-tenancy, we start with what benefit we, we will have if we, if we are doing a multi-tenancy setup. So the first one is the resource optimizations because by consolidating multiple applications on single cluster, we can maximize our resource utilization and then leading to cost saving and improve um, efficiency. And then this, the next point is the simplified management. With multi-tenancy, we can centralize the management of multiple applications and then re re reducing administrative um, overhead and streamlining the operations. And we also benefit of uh, scalability and flexibility because Kubernetes enables easy scalability, allowing tenants to seamlessly scale their application up and down as needed. But we also need to see the challenge we gonna face if we if you are doing multi-tenancy like um, the first one is the resource allocation and isolations because uh, ensuring ensuring proper resource allocation and isolation between tenant can be challenging if we are not properly managed and then the next challenge will be the data privacy and uh, compliance because multi-tenancy raise concern around um, data privacy and uh, compliance. And then we have to answer that there's no data uh, breach between a tenant. And then the next challenge will be, uh, since we are using the same um, infrastructure, is to answer the security and access control. This is the main uh, critical point where we have to um, completely secure and isolate the access. It can be from the access per perspective, it can be from the net network perspective. And the next one is the um, what is observability. So observability is um, the ability to measure the internal state of a system. And then we can use the observability, observability data to identify and troubleshoot a problem. And maybe to also optimize our performance and uh, maybe to also uh, improve the security. And I think you already familiar with these uh, three observability pillars, like the metrics, logs, uh, and traces. So in metrics, we can serve as a numer numeric indicators, like offering insight into a system health, like uh, CPU, memory, and this usage. 
And then in the logs, we can see a details how an application process is um, behave. And then in the traces, we can have um, a collecting information from different part of application and to show how a request is moved through uh, the system. And these three pillars is very uh, important to, um, to us in a distributed system. So incorporating them strategically will enable um, effective uh, debugging and then um, to easily troubleshoot um, in a distributed system. And we're gonna uh, discuss more uh, how we do a multi-tenancy setup on these uh, three, like from the metrics, traces, and logs. And to start, um, let's start with the metrics. So the first one will be uh, how to aggreg aggregate the metrics data, how to aggregate the application metrics, and then how to aggregate the shared infra metrics. And then the next uh, question mark here is how to have a global view, and then how to store metrics for a long-term period. And how to uh, aggregate the data. So first one is the application metrics. So let's say we have a Prometheus instance for a um, specific tenant. Let's say in this example is tenant X. And in our case, we are using a Prometheus operator. So in a Prometheus operator, there is a service monitor uh, CR that we can define and we can tell on the service monitor, like on what path the application metrics we want to scrape. Let's say on the path slash actuator slash Prometheus. And in the application metrics, actually, there's no issue. We can just easily define on what namespace and the namespace uh, sector it's belonging. But the interesting um, to um, share here is the shared component metrics. Let's say we have um, Kubelet uh, component. So in a Kubelet component, will uh, give us, for example, the resource utilization metrics from um, the applications, but the Kubelet component is running on all the worker node machine in Kubernetes. And a container that running on that worker node machine is not only from a specific tenant, it can be from um, different uh, containers from different tenant. So what we do here is using the same, um, as using the service monitor, but what we do here is using a metric relabeling concept in Prometheus. So since it's a, this is a shared component from the Kubelet, we need to set the path is under slash metrics slash C advisors to get the resource uh, utilization metrics. But we have to we have to do the metric relabelings to ensure we only collect a tenant X data and not the other uh, tenant resource utilization. And then these two service monitor we associate into tenant X Prometheus instance. So this service monitor will only belong to tenant X in instance. So all the metrics on this Prometheus instance is only to fetch uh, tenant X uh, application metrics and to fetch um, resource utilization metrics that are running on a shared component. Okay, that's uh, the easy part. And then the next question is how to have a global view or maybe how to have a long-term storage for um, the Prometheus uh, instance. So in our case, for multiple instance, we have uh, multiple Prometheus. So running a dedicated Prometheus instance for each tenant. So tenant X will have a dedicated um, metrics visualizer using the Grafana. And then the same for the other tenant. And what we need, the pertinent view we already have, but other than that, we want to have a global view, like a central place to observe, to, to observe all the tenants' um, data. So in our case, there is an um, internal uh, IT support team that want to check and want to see which tenant is, um, let's say, taking more or taking most of the resource. And then we need to provide a solution to have a global view. And then the other use case is to uh, store the metrics for a long-term period. And then the use case is maybe you want to store for past three months data, for past six months, or more than that. 
maybe we want to check the historical usage of uh, matrix or some utilization data. So in order to achieve that, like the global view and the long-term matrix um, data solutions, we are using um, Cortex because the default Prometheus is not supporting for uh, storing data for a um, very long term period. And then there is a scalability issues if we are using only a Prometheus instance. So that's why we choose uh, Cortex. And what we are doing here, all the Prometheus instance will do remote write to this single um, component that calls uh, Cortex. And then for each tenant, it will send the headers uh, ID that will represent the uh, tenant information and Cortex will do the data isolations uh, behind the scenes. And then we're gonna have two type of uh, user here, the global view access and then the per tenant view access. So for from each uh, Prometheus instance, we'll use the tenant's um, headers and then to query and to fetch that specific tenant data, we we have to tell or we have to set in the Grafana to use the same headers. So it will fetch uh, the specific tenant data. So this is the, the two type of user, the global view access and the per tenant view access. So uh, Cortex will provide us a horizontally scalable, highly available multi-tenant um, and long-term storage for Prometheus. So this is how uh, Cortex uh, look like from the architecture uh, perspective. So almost all components in the Cortex uh, support uh, horizontally scalable. So it can um, running on highly available and multi-tenant um, also support from, uh, there, is a, there is a multi-tenant support from Cortex and then to also support a long-term storage for Prometheus data. And then we can use any um, storage backend. It, it can be block storage, it can be S3 and, and so on. And the next one is um, traces. So in traces, we, we will have a feasibility on how our application is performing, like how good or how bad uh, our um, applications. So we can see all the end-to-end -end, uh, call is feasible in traces. So we can um, identify if there is a system uh, performance issue in our applications. And then in our implementations, we are using um, some of uh, tooling, start from the Istio as a service mesh that can produce um, traces data. And then we also use um, Jaeger to visualize the traces data. And then we also use open telemetry for um, telemetry transformations. And then let's start again with um, some questions. How to aggregate the traces data between a tenant? And then do we need to instrument in the apps or maybe to only instrument in the surface mesh uh, configurations? Or maybe we need to um, configure in both places. And then the next question is how to do some exclusion or how to do some transformation in traces data. And let's start first with uh, how we do traces aggregation uh, in the tenant. So this is uh, how it look. So we are using a surface mesh. The surface mesh is using Istio. It's a separate component that all the tenant is using um, the same um, Istio. So we are using single mesh for all the tenant. And then we have um, two uh, tenant here, the tenant X workloads and then the tenant Y workloads. And then if you are unfamiliar with surface mesh, there is um, sidecar containers that running alongside with our um, applications. In Istio, it's called Envoy. Envoy will produce all the um, traces data and will taking care of all the networking concerns in a surface mesh concept. So let's start with um, the surface mesh um, traces uh, aggregation. So in uh, traces from surface mesh aggregation, we are using a telemetry API. So the telemetry API is a CRDs from Istio that we can tell to specific tenant X workloads, all the envoy running on that namespace, please send it to a specific open telemetry collector. Because on each tenant, we are using um, different 
or dedicated open telemetry for each. So in the Istio, we will have um, a number of entries of open telemetry details. And then in the telemetry API that running on a specific namespace, we can set, okay, for this tenant X workloads, please send it to a specific open telemetry for that um, tenant. And the same way for from the applications um, perspective, we instrument that applications to send the application uh, traces data to uh, the same instance. So tenant X workloads will uh, send the application tenant um, traces data to open telemetry collector X. And then finally, after um, the open telemetry will uh, receive all the traces data from the application and from the surface mesh, the open telemetry collector will send it to the Jager collector and the Jager query to visualize the traces data. And in other setup or before we uh, before we are using open telemetry from the envoy it's that it's directly sent to jager collector and then what we uh, face is uh, we have an issue there because we cannot do any traces transformations so we cannot do some um, traces exclusion we cannot do any traces manipulations and so on and that's why there is an intermediate layer so that's why open telemetry uh, we choose here to provide those kind of uh, capability. And then in the open telemetry, there is a pipeline that um, basically taking the telemetry input in the receivers and then um, taking the, or doing some processor to do some telemetry transformations, or maybe to do some telemetry uh, exclusion or filtering. And then finally, it will send to uh, telemetry or to send it to other um, tooling or to other um, telemetry backend, like for example, Jager for traces. So telemetry API to route the traces to a correct target, and then the open telemetry can help uh, us here to do some um, transformations. And then um, we have to instrument in both place, like in the surface mesh uh, configuration perspective, and in the application perspective to have the full end-to-end um, -end traces within the system. And then there is a um, use case where um, in our implementation, we want to drop some unwanted traces and then we can easily do that using the open telemetry collectors. So there is a three pipeline like I said in the previous slide, there is a input, there is a process, and there is output. And then we can just easily add a policy there to drop the unwanted traces. And then um, for example, here we use the policies with name drop no noisy traces URL, user agent equal to Prometheus, and then we set on the pipeline and then the open telemetry will uh, taking care to do that um, exclusions. So yeah, why open telemetry? Because in the general setup, if we are only using Istio mesh and we only send directly to Jager, like there's no way to do some um, telemetry uh, transformations. So that's why the open telemetry here is very flexible to use. It can um, do that kind of stuff to do some um, transformations. That's in uh, traces. And then next move to um, our uh, logs pipeline um, for uh, multi-tenancy setup. How to aggregate the data for um, between tenant and then how to easily add and remove a tenant logs pipeline. So uh, to give um, overview, we are using um, a shared Kubernetes cluster and then there is a Kubernetes not machines a group of uh, node machines that all containers from all uh, different tenant can run on that um, the same machine. And then we choose to use a Fluent Bit Operator because Fluent Bit Operator can give us a single or a dedicated um, definition for each tenant. So there is a cluster input CRDs and then there is cluster output CRDs for each tenant. And then we can um, define on each tenant definitions 
for tenant X, for example, please ensure to fetch the tenant X data and then using the tag and match concept in FluentBit, it can ensure us to uh, give a, a proper or a correct logs data from a correct tenant. And then we do the same for the other uh, tenant definitions, tenant Y, we only fetch for tenant Y data. And then the fluent bit operator, since each tenant will have dedicated definitions, the fluent bit operator will reconcile and then will uh, generate the configuration and then will distribute all the, configura all the configuration to the fluent bit agent running on the, uh, all the worker node machines. And then why we use FluentBit operator? If you are familiar with FluentBit, there is a single file um, configurations that the format is very unstructured. It's not JSON or it's not a YAML. So we need to find or we need to have a solution where we can easily add and remove the tenant pipelines. So that's why we don't use or we don't directly manage this configuration, but we choose to use the um, fluent bit operator so we can just add and remove the, the CR or the object in the Kubernetes. And then why we choose fluent bit is because high performance, high throughput with low resource consumptions. That's about logs. And then the last point here is a uh, Kyverno implementation in our use case that we call as a, the multi-tenancy en engine. So Kyverno is an um, open source project. It's a policy engine specifically for Kubernetes. And then uh, there are many functions that Kyverno can, can do here, but here is uh, some point. Policies as Kubernetes resource, so there's no, we don't have to learn a new language. There's no programming language we have to uh, use. And then Kyverno can validate, can mutate, can generate, or even clean up a resource. It can synchronize configuration across namespace. Maybe we want to reuse, reuse some Kubernetes object like config map, maybe like a Kubernetes secret across namespace. Or maybe we want to block a non conformer resource using admission control. Or maybe we want to um, only reporting for the non conformer resource. And then we use a lot uh, of this Kyverno in our um, multi-tenancy requirements because it can produce um, automatic tenant configuration and everything. And this is how uh, Kyverno works. It runs as a dynamic admission controller in Kubernetes cluster. It receives a validating and mutating admission webhook from the Kubernetes API server that can apply uh, to the matching policies to return a result that enforce um, admission policies or maybe to reject the request. And what we do with Kyverno is to dynamically uh, configure the observability configurations and then to dynamically um, provide a tenant configurations. But other than that, we also use a lot of Kyverno in a multi-tenancy um, setup, like maybe to automatically create a network policy for um, each tenant creations or for each uh, tenant onboarding, or maybe to also use uh, Kyverno to automatically to automatically create a Istio gateway for every tenant onboarding and some other use case to clone Kubernetes secret and so on. And here is one of uh, our Kyverno policies in um, setting up the dynamic observability config for traces. So in Kyverno policies, there is a match sections and then there is um, the accent sections. And in this case, or for this example is the mutate um, accents. So in the match sections, it will tell to um, Kyverno what resource that Kyverno need to watch. So for um, this example, it's watching for namespace that has label tenant equal to true. And if there is a namespace that has that label, these Kyverno policies will do uh, mutations. It will do mutation to Istio operator to add the extension provider list to that uh, specific tenant. So watch namespace with tenant, um, with watch namespace with label tenant equal to true, then do some patch operation to um, Istio. So to visualize these um, policies, we have a Kubernetes a cluster with the empty extension provider in, in the Istio. And then let's say we want to onboard um, 
a tenant. We have Kyvero installed and then with this policy applied. We have a namespace tenant X with this label tenant equal to true. Kyvero will watch and then it will match to this policy and Kyvero will do the patch operation to add the extension provider of um, open telemetry um, details for that uh, specific tenant. And then it will do the same for um, other names for other namespace that has the matching uh, label to this uh, matching Kyvernal policies. And then it will do uh, mutations and it will do some um, patch operation to the extension provider's entries list. And this is the other examples. It's quite similar, but this time it's to generate some um, observability, observability config uh, logs pipeline. It will generate uh, two resource, the cluster input, the cluster output. And the same like uh, previous one, it will watch for every namespace that has that labels. And then it will generate the cluster input and uh, the cluster output definition for that tenant. And before we are using Kyverno, we also want to share this um, story because before we uh, adopting Istio, uh, sorry, before we adopting Kyverno, we have to write our own um, Kubernetes client or Kubernetes controller that uh, to do the um, the patching. And it was super hard to maintain because we have to write our own controller and it's very um, not uh, scalable and after we after we are using Kyverno, we deprecate that toolings because Kyverno can uh, achieve the same goals. So if I bring back again one of the sample Kyverno policies, it's very simple, it's very declarative. So we don't have to use, or we don't have to write our own controller. So that's why we um, start adopting Kyverno and we deprecate that, um, that uh, controller that we have to write our own. So it's simple and then no programming language needed. And then with Kyverno policies, it can uh, achieve the same thing. So yeah, it's very simple and very declarative. And to um, sum up for today's uh, presentations, specifically on um, designing um, observability solutions in multi-tenancy environment, Kubernetes, uh, first one Kubernetes operator can uh, give us an easy way to manage a multi-tenancy settings. For example, in the Fluentbit operator, we have a dedicated uh, tenant CRs, and then the same thing with the Prometheus, we have a dedicated service monitor that defined in a Kubernetes uh, CRDs or CR. And then the next point is to understand its component limit. So for example, in Prometheus, Prometheus is not designed to store a long-term metrics data, and then let uh, other tooling handle that, for example, Cortex. And then cooperating tools to get the most uh, out of it, for example, the Istio and OpenTelemetry, because before we are using OpenTelemetry, we, we don't have uh, the telemetry transformation solutions, and then after we combine and then we mix this uh, two of um, tooling, we have uh, that kind of uh, capability. And then use dynamic admission controller whenever possible. So we were using our own controller. We were uh, writing our own um, controller or operator. But since we, there is a Kyverno that can achieve the same thing, so we deprecate that tooling and then we use a uh, Kyverno on that. And that's all. Thank you. Any questions? Um, going all the way back to metrics, uh, so if I understood correctly, you had one Prometheus instance for each tenant. Yes. Right? Yes. Um, do you know how like closely married this approach is to that, or like how easily it would be? Is there is there any path to having uh, less than a Prometheus instance per tenant, or is that pretty much a, a necessary? You mean to only have one Prometheus for all tenants? Something like that, or yeah, mm -hmm. fewer, than, fewer than one per tenant. I'm wondering if, if there's any path to doing that that's mm -hmm. possible in your mind, or if that's really like a 
Um, for now, the cortex is, um, yeah, we have dedicated Prometheus for each tenant. The only goals for now is to have the global view. So, um, yeah, I think for later we gonna explore, maybe we, we can use single, really single um, instance of uh, Prometheus for all the tenants, but um, not yet for now. Yeah. Mm, yeah, we don't do any um, optimization in the Prometheus side because Cortex will uh, take care of that because the, the Prometheus is by design is um, only for a short term period, but by doing the remote write, we, um, um, I mean, give Cortex, uh, I mean, the Cortex will take care of all the scalability issues. So we don't do um, any optimization in the Prometheus side. I cannot hear uh, completely. Uh, you're not seeing any performance issues with running on Prometheus? Yes, uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We only face issues when we want to query um, some old data, maybe past three months, past six months. So, yeah. Oh, that's yes, that's long-term storage, but after we use uh, Cortex, that solve our problems. Yeah? Does Caverno have any kind of like garbage collection facilities? So like if a tenant, I see how it creates stuff, but if a tenant then goes away, does it mm -hmm. out somehow as well? And mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. In the match sections, um, we tell to the Caverno, please watch this resource and then please generate another resource. The Caverno will be able to um, remove if the policy no longer match. So yes, there is there is a garbage collection for that. Yeah. 